Hello, everyone. We're going to give everyone just a couple of minutes to get in here. And we'll start just a couple of minutes after two. Give everyone just one more minute. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, before we ask Chris's Division of Transplantation to kick things off, I just want to remind you that this meeting is being recorded. If you do not wish to be recorded, please disconnect now. Uh, please ensure that your mics are muted, cameras are off unless you're presenting today. Uh, we will be distributing the webinar recording in the coming weeks. Okay, Lauren, let's go ahead and get started. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Marley. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Do Nation Campaign's National Donate Life Month webinar. Thanks so much for joining us today. I am Lauren Derensberg with HRSA's Division of Transplantation, and I'm here with my colleague, Kim Rogers. We're also joined by our Akoya team members, Jenna Kavanaugh, Marley Furman, and Bree Hennessy. We sincerely appreciate you all for making time in your busy schedule for today's webinar. We recognize that competing priorities can make attending events like this a challenge, especially as we are all busy preparing for National Donate Life Month. We're very grateful for your ongoing support and involvement in the Donation campaign. We have several spotlight speakers joining us, and I hope today's presentations inspire and excite you to conduct Do Nation scorecard activities throughout April and beyond. We'll begin today's webinar with a presentation from Hillary Klein of Donate Life America about ways to get involved in National Donate Life Month 2023. Then we'll hear from today's OPO presenters, Julia Young from Donor Network Arizona, Beth Hinesley of Honor Bridge, and our representative from the Nevada Donor Network, who will share how they have organized and run Donate Life Month with partners in their donor service areas. We'll also learn how OPOs are introducing due nation to non-hospital workplaces and involving them in Donate Life Month scorecard activities. We're excited to share how we can all raise awareness during National Donate Life Month about the crucial need for more donors, especially for minority and multicultural communities. Thank you for helping the Do Nation campaign and HRSA build a more inclusive donor pool. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to Akoya, who's going to do further introductions of today's speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. If you haven't had the chance to hear from me, my name is Marley Furman and I am the project manager of the Do Nation campaign. I'm actually gonna go back. Nope, I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> um, <laughs> my name is Marley Furman, project manager of the Do Nation campaign. I'm joined by my colleague, Bree, who will be monitoring the chat box today. Uh, feel free to drop questions into the chat throughout today's webinar and Bree will be glad to help you out. We have a fantastic lineup of speakers today and I can't wait to introduce them. But before I do so, I want to make sure that everyone is aware of the Do Nation campaign Donate Life Month graphics. In keeping with DLA's inspiration of a spring pond coming to life, we have three graphics you can add to the mix for your social media calendars, e-newsletters, or websites. 
Uh, don't forget that you can earn five scorecard points for each post sharing a donation campaign graphic, and you can earn even more points by cross-posting on multiple platforms. Each of the three graphics is available in English and Spanish, and they can be downloaded exclusively from the Donation Campaign Facebook group. If you haven't already, be sure to join the Facebook group where we regularly share graphics, resources, campaign reminders, and advice. Okay, now for today's speakers. I'm going to briefly introduce them all here before we dive into our first presentation. We have a jam-packed schedule today full of inspiration for you all. Up first, we'll hear from Hillary Klein of Donate Life America, here to share updates, tips, and recommendations straight from DLA. Then Julia Young will be speaking on behalf of Donor Network of Arizona to spotlight engagement activities she and her team conduct with motor vehicle department locations in her donor service area. Beth Hensley will speak for Honor Bridge to discuss how they are beginning to introduce donation to non-hospital workplaces and what plans they have for ongoing participation. Angela Hockman of CORE will be sharing lots of creative ideas for celebrating National Donate Life Month that can be adapted for hospitals and non-hospitals alike. And our last speaker today will be Heather Asipovich of Nevada Donor Network and Julie McIntosh from Compassion Care Hospice here to talk about their successful partnership and involvement in donation. Thank you so much to all of our speakers for making time to present today. We know how busy this time of year is for everyone, and we're grateful that you have made donation a priority. With that, I'll hand things over to the inimitable Hillary Klein to begin today's presentations. Well, that was quite an introduction. Thanks, Marley. Um, I'm so glad to be with you all today and to be a part of this wonderful panel. Um, lots of great uh, folks here to hear from today. I'm excited to hear from them as well. Wanted to just share with you all some updates around National Donate Life Month, um, our theme this year of Make a Splash. Um, and with this additional um, quick tagline using all the puns possible of a hop to it and register your decision to be an organ eye and tissue donor today. We are keeping a Google Doc for those who are interested in puns. We found they really helped social reach um, last year with be a donor as the theme in 2022. So if you need any of those, um, I can share those out with the materials after the webinar. Next slide, please. Um, I'm sure as you all already know, the theme uh, of Make a Splash for this year's National Donate Life Month. If you haven't heard kind of more about this artwork and kind of what went into the thinking, just wanted to kind of bring everybody up um, on that same page as we start and talk about these different activities. Um, so Donate Life America um, was inspired this year by a spring pond um, and that kind of world coming to life within the pond. Frogs and toads across cultures um, are representative of a sign of healing and renewal and water lilies represent hope. What I really loved as well and learned in our research of this is that that flower of the lily um, and that pad, what you see on the surface barely tells the story of all that happens underneath with the complex root systems and all of that to me was very evocative of how hard the entire donation and transplantation system works and collaborates and supports each other um, to let hope and life bloom. Next slide, please. So as part of National Donate Life Month, which is the whole of April, um, we do have a number of celebrations within that that help kind of each week have different um, areas to focus on and to help you drive your content and your outreach um, and your ambassador activities, of course, as well. So April 5th is National Donate Life uh, Living Donor Day. We are thrilled to see how much this has grown in just the few years that we've started this. Um, so with your outreach to living donation, it's a great one for your clinical partners um, and living donor transplant programs to engage with as well. We've seen a huge response to this um, across social and with the public. Blue and Green Spirit Week this year is April 8th to the 14th. This is something we started um, pandemic year one um, to just engage folks with things they can do at home or wherever they are. And it really took off. So it's something we've continued on um, throughout the years following. And so starting with a volunteer appreciation day, um, creating Donate Life Rocks, painting rocks, which we've seen become a huge hit, um, Donate Life flag raising day, sending a message of hope, 
and thanks. So sending a message of hope for those on the national transplant waiting list and also encouraging um, recipients to write a message of thanks to their donor families. And um, if you're on the DLA community site, if you have access there, we had a great speaker on a January webinar talking about great partnerships between OPOs and transplant programs and establishing writing centers um, within their transplant clinics um, to kind of help that process as well. Um, April 12th, thanking your healthcare heroes, um, and then closing with Donate Life Chalk and ending, of course, with National Donate Life Blue and Green Day on April 14th. Um, and you see that graphics there too. We'd love to see everyone's creativity on Donate Life Blue and Green Day um, across hospitals and DMVs and everyone in the public. Um, Donate Life America will again be running a national photo contest, um, and that'll be on our website at donatelife.net. Next slide, please. Oh, okay, great. If you click again, okay, perfect. This was a great example um, from LifeLink and Tampa General Hospital of how to engage in um, Donate Life Chalk Day. And let's see if it'll play for us today. It's a time lapse of this amazing chalk artist um, outlining the art from last year in front of the hospital, which I think got them a lot of great local media coverage and content on social. Um, Let's see if I can get it here. Sorry. Yeah. No. No worries. If not, happy to share that separately. And I think we also have that stored on um, uh, dlacommunity.net on the community right. site. No, no problem. I will just say it's really cool. And it is this time lapse of this amazing artist um, outlining um, the amazing Be a Donor art from last year. And you just can kind of watch the crowds gather and um, as as the, um, they're working through that. It's really cool. And I know a couple of um, hospitals are taking that this year um, and having that um, as well in front of their hospitals with this year's art. So just a cool idea if you, that's something um, that might be good for your um, local outreach. Next slide, please. Um, and just a couple of great examples um, that flag raising can be in many different ways. We know there are a lot of flag raising ceremonies that happen. We also um, have home flags available for ambassadors who wanna raise a flag at home um, or for folks who just wanna take a picture um, as well, that also counts as a flag raising. Um, and then just a couple of our favorites from uh, Donate from uh, Donate Life Rocks, different ways that people can decorate their rocks. And then that top photo is from University Transplant uh, System in San Antonio. They bring it every year, guys. I'm not going to lie. It's amazing. Um, so they are. That's from uh, Donate Life Blue and Green Day. Next slide, please. Um, continuing on with some of the celebrations that um, you all are familiar with, with National Donate Life Month is National Pediatric Transplant Week. So this is April 23rd through the 29th this year. It's always that last full week of April. Um, and this is a partnership um, celebration between DLA, UNOS, AST, ASTS, and Transplant Families. Transplant Families has been amazing um, and being a part of our advisory group with this um, uh, celebration. And we've seen National Pediatric Transplant Week mentioned the past two years in the White House proclamation. So we're thrilled to see this really being engaged. And we see a lot of um, response from uh, transplant hospitals around this week as well, if that's something um, in your outreach that, that might be helpful. Next slide, please. A couple of resources and promo items. I'm just going to run through these quickly. You guys are probably really familiar with these, but in case you're not, um, or you're looking for like, where's that thing I saw? Um, there's downloadable print and web materials available, of course, and always <laughs> um, on dlacommunity.net. So there are uh, calendar graphics, downloadable posters that you can, you know, eight by eight and a half by 11, you can print um, from wherever you are. These are all in English and Spanish, um, TV monitor, um, sized uh, graphics, web banners, a PowerPoint template, Zoom background, um, and a coloring page, um, all available there on dlacommunity.net. Um, next slide, please. Um, as well as all of the social media graphics, again, in English and Spanish and with and without a URL, if you want to add your state donor registry to that. Um, and 
these um, all of these celebrations and different content will be updated within the Donate Life community content calendar um, uh, already updated March 1st. But we continue to update that throughout because there's so many great articles um, and stories to share during Donate Life Month. Please go on and check back to that if you're in charge of social media content for your organization. It's a great place to pull from. Next slide, please. Um, as well, uh, we also have Media Toolkit and some additional resources. So there's a um, press release that is customizable for your state, as well as donation and transplantation statistics, FAQs, a state proclamation that's customizable for your state, um, and stories of hope. Next slide. Um, so where are these things? Here's where they are on DLA on the DLA community site. It's uh, dlacommunity.net. Um, and if you go after you log in, and if you're not logged in, it's a really easy process um, to go ahead and do that. Um, if you don't already have an account, click on National Observances. You'll see all the good stuff right there to click on and download directly from that site. On the community site is where you'll find the entire array of resources. Um, and um, a handful of these will also be available on our public facing website, which is on the next slide. Um, and for we launched a new website this week, PS Soft Launch, but we are um, going to announce that more broadly um, in the coming weeks. So this might look a little different than what you're used to seeing on DonateLife.net. We hope you like it. Um, this is where you can find um, or where you want to if you want to send your ambassadors to download resources. They're available here on the public site on DonateLife.net under how you can help in the mega menu under national observances and celebrations, then you can just click on national donate life month. I see a question in the chat. Can hospitals add their logos to these documents? Um, yeah, you can add your logos to those documents. We try to leave space so that you can add that logo um, right in there. We just ask the donate life has to stay on, um, but you can add your additional logo there. And if you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to me um, or Lauren Squares um, at Donate Life America. And I'll drop her email in the chat too. We can also help if you want to need any help customizing graphics. We're happy to help with that too. Uh, next slide, please. Um, great. For those of you who don't know who are looking for print um, pieces, there's also a DLA print shop that you can go and order your own things directly at conquestgraphics.com slash DLA home. I know that's a lot to remember. I'll put that in the chat if it's helpful. Um, but you can download posters, um, table tents, a tear off pad, note cards. Um, and you can customize some aspects of these um, items as well if you want to make those um, customizable for your organization or your state. We try to make that really user friendly. You can just go right in, do what you need to do, and it'll ship right out to you. Next slide, please. Thank you, Bree, for rocking the chat over there. I appreciate you dropping that link in. Um, for folks who are still looking for Donate Life uh, Month promo items, here's a little bit of the sampling. We're a little obsessed with the frog. Um, and so you can grab all of these from the member site. Um, and there is um, some of these are also available on um, the public store as well. And I'll put those uh, links in the chat. The public store is uh, shopdonatelife.com. <laughs> Thank you, Bree. And I'll drop the member site in there too in a minute. Next slide, please. Um, and then just some more additional um, things that we're offering for Donate Life Month for promo items. If you have any questions, please reach out to the DLA promotions team. Um, and that's their email right there. I will also say, and you probably won't be able to see this as well. This is a bucket hat with frog eyes. This is only available, I know with my background, you can't see it fully, um, but these, there's a small handful of these available only on the public store. So if that's something you're interested in, they'll be branded on the back with Donate Life and on the front with adorable frogness. Um, so you can go grab those uh, if you're interested. Uh, next slide, please. And then just a quick thing to get, we're about to hear some great ideas um, and what people are doing um, during National Donate Life Month. I'm excited to hear. We also had an earlier webinar um, in February that was just an open conversation session for people to share different ideas that they're doing for National Donate Life Month. And these are some of the highlights I just wanted to pull over to get you guys thinking. And if you have any questions about these, happy to connect you with the um, state team um, or organization that's running these. Um, this was Donate Life Indiana is doing school announcements. So announcements like over the PA system in their high schools during National Donate Life Month, which just everyone thought was brilliant because it's such an easy ask and easy lift for the schools to do. Just brilliant. 
Um, uh, New Mexico uh, Donor Services and Don Don New Mexico is working in partnership with the pet adoption charity there at their DMVs. So they're bringing all of these things together. It's amazing. I know some of you have probably seen the studies that living donors um, often have are, are also rescue pet owners. We've seen some studies in this, so it's kind of a really interesting overlap and just generosity um, as well. So cool partnership there. I think New Mexico is also doing a glow party at their town plaza. I know uh, Nevada Donor Services has done that in the past as well. It's a great, great idea. Um, I believe this was New Mexico as well that's doing a message through their statewide email system going out for National Donate Life Month. Brilliant. Um, again, hospital chalk campaigns. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, New Jersey is hosting a TikTok contest around this theme of every community needs a hero. Um, and some folks are doing a screening of the film, a donation conversation. Um, if you attended the DLA conference this year, you may have seen that. If not, it is a 20 minute film that really, um, that follows some folks from um, uh, Pacific Northwest mm -hmm. through our family Sorry. coordinators and transplant coordinators um, through just their days along with recipients and a donor family. And it's just really beautifully done. Um, I haven't seen something done that well that really reflects the care of the patient uh, and of the donor and the donor family um, from our community. So if you're interested in that, please reach out and I can connect you with the folks that uh, made that film. Um, coffee sleeves and, and table tents at local restaurants and hospital cafes, QR codes. Um, on coffee sleeves, um, making a compilation video of all the flag raisings to share back with your hospitals and partners, uh, putting floor mats and stickers in local cafes or at the hospital cafes um, with National Donate Life Month artwork. We see this at DMVs a lot. I'm sure Julia is going to talk about stuff. Um, and then there's an iBank working with a number of their local partners who are doing airport signage. Um, and so we're really all of these are just great ideas, and I know you're about to hear some more. If you have any questions around any of the Donate Life Month materials, please feel free um, to reach out um, or drop me a line in the chat here. And I think that's it for me. I think my email's on the next slide. Oh, Maybe. No, apparently not. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> nope. All good. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. And thank you for all you do. I mean, National Donate Life Month is a huge undertaking. And every year I'm amazed at the incredible work um, that you all do to help save and heal lives and raise awareness. So thank you. Thank you, Hillary. We cannot wait to see what everyone does for April next year. Uh, we are a little tight on time, but anyone with questions is encouraged to ask them in the chat box. Bree and Hillary can help you out for anything that's related to DLA. Um, Hillary will take the lead and then Bree is there for any donation questions. Uh, up next today is Julia Young from Donor Network of Arizona. Julia, please take it away. Well, thank you. Um, I just want to take a moment to thank Marley and her team for inviting me to speak today. I'm really honored that I got to join you um, and our wonderful colleague, Hillary from Donate Life America, who just shared some amazing ideas with you. Um, what I And my contact information is down in the corner if you guys uh, need that. Um, so I guess what I would like to share with you is that um, while I get to do some really interesting things here in Arizona, there are OPOs in every state who have cultivated amazing relationships, not only with their DMVs and state teams, um, agencies, uh, whoever their driver license partners happen to be, um, they are out there just doing amazing things. And what you're going to see from, from me is really just a sliver of of all the just truly creative and outstanding ideas that folks are doing across across America. Um, so this is not unique to Arizona, I guess is what I want to say. Um, our OPOs are working with their driver's license partners um, thoroughly all the time. So in, I'm gonna stay on, on this slide for just a little bit. Um, the, we do a newsletter um, and we would we used to do like a crossword puzzle in the newsletter uh so back in 2020 we did a thank you card we kind of pulled that uh that you know that um image the the crossword into that thank you card we actually do these thank you cards every year we get our, our volunteers and ambassadors to send thank you cards handwritten messages of gratitude and inspiration and they send them out to the dmvs on a yearly basis 
the DMVs never get tired of it. They have um, high turnover. So believe it or not, these messages um, are almost always uh, really fresh. They're hitting fresh, fresh people all the time. Um, we also do a lot of apparel. We give a lot of t-shirts out. Um, and as, as a result of COVID, our DMVs are now allowed to wear jeans um, Monday through Friday, as long as they're wearing an agency polo. So it, it could be an ADOT, an Arizona Department of Transportation polo, or it can be, lucky, lucky for us, it can be a Donate Life polo. So we try to issue a, the new hires a t-shirt as soon as we can. And because polos were a little more expensive, we try to give them a polo at their 90 days, which is a nice point of celebration. You made it to your 90 days, here's your polo. Um, that has been really popular. So um, let's see. And then also we have, I think a lot of people, a lot of OPOs maybe do these donor quilts. Um, we've got about 50 of these quilts and we have now started placing them, um, displaying them inside our MBDs with a little plaque that states um, how many lives uh, statistically are transformed and healed um, by the 48 donors that are represented on every one of these quilts. That number for your reference is around 500, upwards of 500. Um, so, and that's a, that's a really impactful message for people to see. Um, let's go to the next slide. Sure. One of the reasons that I'm showing all of this to you because it's not all specific to Donate Life Month, but I guess the message that I want to, to share with you is that um, consistency is key. We don't only work with these MBDs during Donate Life Month. We are, we are working with them throughout the year, throughout all of our observations and various celebrations that we do month to month. So um, for February 14th, now this was right in the middle of the pandemic and people were trying their hand at baking and sourdough and all kinds of fun things. So um, during the shutdown, we decided to do a cookie decorating contest. And you can see that we have um, our, our uh, mascot is a big giant Sororo cactus. And so we got cactus shaped uh, cookie cutters that we sent out with our recipes of remembrance, which is a book that um, our donor families contribute to. It's recipes um, from their loved one that they loved and, and you know, and food is what brings us all together. So it's a really touching way to remember those who have passed and those who have passed on their gifts of life. This was hugely popular. Um, it turned out to be the, um, that February was the highest donor designation rate we've had in February ever. So it turned out to be a really, really popular um, and successful event. And we still have people asking, when are we gonna do it again? Um, we also have an image down here of Loteria. Um, I don't know if, if everybody's familiar with it. It's kind of like bingo um, with a, a Mexican flavor, um, but we have lots of things that uh, were DMV related on there. So that's just a little snippet. Um, we give out brownies in August, um, August and September when we're celebrating the life-saving mission of our MBDs and third party offices. Um, so. The image that you see with the lifesaver that was um, that was on the brownies. We're always trying to remind our partners um, that they are indeed lifesavers. We we simply could not save the number of lives that we do without them. Um, on the earlier slide, uh, you might have seen that 98% of um, well, let me back up. Just for instance, here in Arizona, we've got four and a half million people who are registered. More than four and a half million people who are registered, 98% of those people made that life-saving decision while they were at their MBDs applying for a license or ID. So again, very, very popular or a very, very important partner for us. But there are other partners too, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, over on the side, did you see a picture of one of the cookies? That was a winning cookie <laughs> for that cookie contest. Um, and then last year's bee, of course, um, very popular. People are still raving about the bees, by the way, Hillary. <laughs> Next slide. So another way that we um, have found that is very, very successful 
is finding partners within our MBDs and third parties who have a story of donation themselves. And then we share that. Um, so we've got uh, a calendar that we put out every month. And the top two pictures that you see here are individuals who work for our MBDs um, who have that donation uh, story for themselves. Bonnie is a living donor, as you can see there. Um, she's standing with Randy, her, her kidney recipient. And then next to them, we have Lisbeth and her uncle Ramon. Um, Ramon received a liver 20 years ago. And uh, Lisbeth and her family um, are, are so blessed. Uh, Ramon is, has been such a, a, an important part of their lives, has really kind of stepped in as a father figure to so many of their family members. And so to hear them speak about how important it is that he has been there for them for the last 20 years, just really impactful. And the fact that she works for the MBD and gets to share that story with her MBD family, super powerful. We, um, we also have down in the corner, we have a picture of one of our newsletters that we put out. And this again is uh, an opportunity for one of our MBD people to share that her brother uh, nearly lost his life if it wasn't for a um, finding a liver in time. Um, so again, we're, we're bringing this back to our, our partners and showing them that this can happen to any one of us and it can hit real close to home. This past year um, in December, we participate in a Fiesta Bowl parade here in Arizona with big, huge floats. It's a big thing. Um, and this is the first year that we have invited our MBD partners uh, to walk with us in the parade. We gave them their own signs, as you can see there. They walk very proudly with these signs. They say ADOT MBD saves lives. Um, they were so proud and happy to be there. So that's something that we look forward to repeating year after year. We'll go to the next slide. Now this gets a little closer to Donate Life Month activities. Uh, here we've got some uh, a picture up at the top of three uh, very joyful ladies. Um, they are they are wearing three of the shirts uh, types of apparel that we have. We've got the polo there that says "Check the Box" with the Donate Life Arizona logo. We've got the T-shirt in the middle that actually says "Put Your Heart in the Right Place" with kind of like a an, a, a kind of a graphic of of what a, a driver's license looks like. We've got all the decorations. And then just like Donate Life America, we have um, our own website uh, with customizable and downloadable um, things for all of our partners to, to access um, for, Donate Life, um, for Donate Life Month. We'll go to the next slide. Oh, I didn't realize I used that picture twice, but it's a good one. So <laughs> um, yeah, so some of these folks get really into it. Last year, like I said, they loved the bee so much. They actually created their own t-shirts. They had they they cut out little bees and and they had people who who signed up to be a donor um, put bees all over the office. It was so much fun. Um, so this is just a really a small example of how the MVDs really get into um, celebrating Donate Life Month month with us. But there are other, lots of other partners besides your DMVs and your MVDs. MVDs, you've got your state MVDs, but a lot of states have private um, offices that issue driver's licenses and IDs. We really increased our engagement with them over the, the pandemic. Um, that has, uh, that's been very successful. Um, but we outreach with funeral homes, gyms, schools, restaurants, um, I went to a networking event last week and some insurance brokers approached me. They themselves have been touched by donation. And now as they're selling uh, life insurance to their clients, they want to remind their clients of their power to save lives and encourage them to register. So you just, you never know where you're going to find a new partner. Um, we had uh, another person with her own donation connection. She works for a payday loan business and with like, I don't know, 10 locations here in Arizona, and they all want to uh, promote donation. That was a very unexpected partner to pop up, but we're, we're very happy to, to partner with them and give them all the 
tools they need to promote uh, donations. Um, yeah, I think that might be it for me. I think that's my last slide. And I'm anytime you guys have questions or uh, want to hear a little bit more about what we're doing, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much, Julia. You guys have built such a wonderful partnership with the MVDs. Uh, we'd love to see more DMVs and driver's license partners across the nation getting involved in donation and earning recognition for their efforts. Uh, so please you know, avail yourself of reaching out to Julia for some advice or feel free to reach out to uh, HRSA donation um, as well. All right, up next is Beth Hensley from Honor Bridge. Beth, over to you. Oops, sorry. Beth? Sorry about that. I thought oh, my there computer. Uh, I thought my computer had jumped ahead of me and unmuted, but um, my name is Beth Hinesley. I'm with Honor Bridge. I'm a community relations coordinator, and um, I wish I'd put together some slides, um, but uh, next time, if I'm all invited again to speak, I will have some pictures of this year. Um, to start off, Honor Bridge, we have been working in our communities and trying to do uh, awareness everywhere we could get. And one of the things that was so exciting for Honor Bridge is when we did find out about the donation and it not, and being a workplace partner outside of the hospital. We have had great success with um, the workplace partnerships in the hospitals. Uh, we, as the community relations coordinators, we were able to help with events that were in the hospitals. And uh, we saw such a success that we were so excited last year to start building our own kind of for the communications department workplace partners. And so um, I'm so excited uh, to have this do nation and have the workplaces. Um, I can say we're kind of new at it. Uh, we just started probably mid-year last year. And there are three of us. Um, there is two other community relations coordinators and we're kind of spread out across the state of North Carolina. So it's been kind of interesting to see uh, what workplace partners success have been and they all look so different and uh, so when we decided this year, we wanted to get a little bit more information about what went well last year, what do we need to work on this year, and how can we expand this program to touch as many workplaces as possible. And so one of the things that we did right out of the gate was we did kind of a survey of ourselves and we asked questions, what worked well, what didn't work so great, what did companies have that um, they would like us to offer them that was different than kind of what we were providing like rack cards or uh, email blast, things like that. Is there anything different that companies would need that could further reach their employees differently? And is there anything that we could give companies that they could not only take within the workplace, but they could take it out into the community? So when we really asked each other those questions and wrote down our success and what we probably needed to work on a little bit differently for this year, we came up with a whole new game plan. And that was a really great jumping off point for us is just to ask what worked well last year? What can we improve on for this year to make this more successful? It got enough energy that our company recognized Nation, the workplace partner, as something that they wanted to embrace themselves. And so I am so excited to come to you guys to say that we actually have started a strategic improvement process and we're using the workplace, the Do Nation workplace as an actual, uh, we're, we're, we're using this and we're having outside eyes, meaning outside departments within our own organization to come together and when they formed a community committee and they're gonna see, we're working with each other to see how this can work. One of the things that we discovered is, is that a lot of our employees know people who have businesses, who have connections in the community, who have really been able to give us referrals. And also it's led into workplaces wanting to jump on board and wanting to be a part of this HRSA Do Nation workplace partner. And so that's been very successful and helpful to have 
employees of our own organization helping us kind of go out into the community, recognize these, these um, businesses and see how we can work better. So I'm excited to say that we'll have more <laughs> updates on this as we continue this work with the strategic improvement team uh, with this Do Nation Workplace Partner, but they've really embraced it. And um, the exciting thing is, is that one of the other partners I feel like that we're using is our volunteers. We had no idea that our volunteers were so connected in our communities with workplaces, either businesses that they owned or businesses their family members owned or friends. And so we have really been able to use our volunteers in our different communities to recognize potential workplaces. And so that has been an amazing opportunity for us is to um, work with our volunteers on this specific project. And it's a little bit different than the other things that we've kind of asked them to do. And so a lot of them are very excited to be a part of this. And so they feel like that they're actually spreading the message in their communities to more and more and more people. Because whereas doing a health fair or a presentation, you may have a small number of people to be in attendance, but in a workplace, we've got workplaces now that are 500 plus employees. And so they feel like that they're connecting to their communities. They share their story. Uh, we're getting more and more companies are able to do lunch and learns. So we're starting to schedule those. And especially for the month of April, we're going to take advantage of Donate Life Month and our workplaces and do as much as we can with all the amazing opportunities that April brings. But the other exciting thing is, is that we have other months that big things can be recognized. And so that is one thing that workplaces have seen that this is a, it's a, a not really a project for them, but it's kind of, they embrace it because they see the benefits to their employees. They see the benefit to the communities and they see how they are helping make a difference. And so they've embraced this workplace and it's been great um, with this donation project that we're doing. And so, you know, finding those companies we thought were going to be hard. And I, I know I have probably emailed Marley several times and asked several questions because at first this seemed like a really big project that was, how are we going to do this? How can we get our hands around this? And how is it going to work? And when you start just looking within your own organization, your volunteers, your hospitals, we started building those relationships pretty quickly. It has led to, we've actually, uh, one of our successes has been the cities who are now wanting to be a workplace partner with this Do Nation campaign, and they've agreed to do the blue and green. And so they're going to light the buildings, and it's one of those things that they're like, that is so easy, and we can get how many points for that? And then they turn around and they offer other things to their employees, and so the scorecard once they start seeing how easy it is to apply that to their employees and to their, their organizations, they're on board. And so they're so excited to get those scorecards and the numbers to add up and add up. But I cannot wait to share pictures of all the places throughout North Carolina, our service area, that have agreed to be a workplace partner with this Do Nation campaign, but also reaching and doing the lights, the blue and green lights. We are so excited that we are getting that energy here in North Carolina. It's been slow to take off. We've asked year after year, you know, would you please, you know, do this for us for the month of April? And so it is now catching on. And I hope that other organizations, other businesses will see this. They too will also want to be a part of this. The other two great things I want to highlight real quickly is I reached out to our media because oftentimes our media are doing stories. And so I thought, why not offer them the Do Nation Workplace? And I actually had success with two of our um, TV stations. They want to be a part of this. They want their employees to understand this. And they also want to give back by running more stories and raising the awareness of organ and tissue donation, uh, you know, using the media outlet with TV. So they're wanting to do... Um, blue and green day with us and things like that. So that was very exciting for us to be able to get our media on board. We also have a um, 
newspaper here in the Winston-Salem area that I was able to, once they found out the TV station had jumped on, they jumped on as well and said, you know, we can run articles, we can run stories. And so that has been a great, you know, working relationship. And I see this as us building partnerships and there's the sky's the limit at this point. And so I'm so excited. We've had great success with using vendors just that work with our own company, print shops that had, they knew what we did because they print our material, but they really didn't know how to get involved. So we've used our local vendors that work with us on a day-to-day -day basis, and we've signed them up as workplace partners with the Do Nation campaign. Also success with funeral homes, um, police and fire, we're getting them on board as well. And so it's just been an amazing opportunity um, to do this workplace with the Do Nation campaign. And I'm so excited and we are taking notes and we are trying to get a roadmap so that this can be something that can be built on every year and we have success. So um, what started out as we thought, there's no way we're gonna be able to get into these companies. There's no way that they're gonna to wanna to participate. How is this gonna work? Because we had such great success in the hospital and for us, it kind of made sense that the hospitals wanted to do this partnership. But then when we took it into the community, I feel like we're seeing a, a bigger success because companies want to give back. And what's the best way to give back but to work with their local organ procurement organization and help us raise awareness to get more organs for the patients who are waiting just right here in our local transplant centers. And so they actually can see the difference that they're doing just by raising awareness to their own employees. So thank you guys for having me on today. And I look forward to coming back and, you know, talking about more things that we've been able to do. But Do Nation and signing up workplaces has been easier than we thought it was um, once you start making those connections. And you can start even within your own organization and talking to your own staff members and finding out who they know making those connections, making those referrals. And then I can't stress enough, work with your volunteers. They are so connected to their communities, to their churches, to everything. And so this has been a great coming back out of COVID for us to give our volunteers something that they can do, that they don't necessarily have to go out and do the big community events or the presentations where they may still not feel comfortable doing that. They feel like that they can at least help out doing the uh, Do Nation Workplace Partner. So thank you guys for having me on today. And I look forward, heard some great ideas already that I've taken notes on and I would love to reach out to you guys, but can't wait to hear more. Wow, thank you, Bev. I could not even believe how many how much success you've had. That's just so wonderful. Thank you for reporting out to us. Um, we cannot wait to see how those partnerships develop and who else you get on board. Um, we are running low on time. I'm just going to ask our remaining presenters if you can keep it closer to five minutes. We should be able to get you y'all in. Um, up next, we have Angela Hockman from CORE, who has several creative ideas to spark inspiration. Angie, you are up. Thank you, Marley. I am a super fast speaker, so I will keep it to five. Perfect. So my, na my name is Angie Hockman. I'm a professional services liaison at CORE in Pittsburgh. Uh, thank you so much for having us to highlight some of the really cool things that our hospitals do to really wait, raise awareness about donation and increase the designations in our service area. So the first slide that I have, if you can forward on to my slides. I still see Beth's name. I don't know if it's advancing oh. on your end. Oh, I'm so sorry. One second. It was moving forward on my end and no one else's. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's not it either. <laughs> no, hold on a second here. Am I one slide too, too far? Perfect. Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. Go ahead to the next one. Okay. Okay. So this one is, it's the impact of one email that one email can really have. This was done through the Allegheny Health Network Health System, where they sent out one email to 80,000 consumers through the Allegheny Health Network. 
Um, within 24 hours, they received more than a thousand new designations as donors. And this was huge. Since then, we're, I think, around 2,000 donation um, designations now. But what they really did was they focused on keeping the messaging simple and clear. And while a lot of health systems do this and send internal messages to their staff members, it's really preaching to the choir. They're the ones that's trying to build the culture of donation within the hospital, and they're already registered, most of them. So what they did was they sent this from a reputable source, so basically their physicians, their PCP offices, to these consumers, and they were much more inclined to read these and register. So we had huge um, success in that. Go ahead to the next slide. Mm -hmm. This one was a coloring contest done at Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh. Um, they sent this out to kids that were 18 and under, and the hospital would have the kids in the hospital do this coloring contest. So the hospital could hang these throughout the hospital. Um, they also added a second page to it that kind of old school was like Mad Libs where you enter, you know, where it would say enter a noun, enter a verb. But the kids were putting in, here's my name, here's the organ that I was transplanted with. And for some of these kids that were getting transplanted, they were so little that that's all they could do was write their name. And this also um, encouraged them to reach out to their donor families. So they were able to send this page to their donor family and say, hi, my name is Lila and I'm five years old and I got a heart transplant. So something really cool that they did um, to keep their kids safe as well, because a lot of the kids in children's hospital, they don't want those germs coming in. They don't want them being open to the public. Go ahead on to the next slide. This one also ties into Children's Hospital. This is so cool. Um, the window washers at Children's Hospital decided Aww. to dress up as superheroes and they wore the Donate Life cape. So you can see in the picture all the way on the right, a little boy watching uh, one of the superheroes clean the windows. So while they're still waiting for transplant, just seeing how cool this was, it was such an amazing visual for the kids, but also another thing that people from outside were seeing and also keeping the kids safe because they were, you know, in between a wall. So they couldn't be getting any kind of germs. So something so magical for those kids to see. Go ahead to the next slide. This one is also a health system um, um, initiative that they do. It's called Give a Hand for Donation. So Allegheny Health Network, all of their hospitals pick a day in April. It's usually on National Blue and Green Day. And each hospital will set up a table in their high traffic areas where they paint people's hands blue and green and people come and put their handprint and sign their name in support of donation and really giving a hand to all the people that are still waiting and saying, yes, I registered, I'm a donor as well. And then they display these in their hospitals. So super cool event. They've been doing this one for years and every year we continue to do it. Go ahead on to the next slide. There we go. Um, this one is all about donor wall dedications. A lot of our bigger hospitals that have a lot of donors decided to embark on creating a new spot in the hospital to really memorialize and to celebrate the lives that were saved and healed through donation. So what we do is each year, the hospitals that have these walls will send out an invitation to all the donor families from the year prior, inviting to them to this celebration of life. The family can bring as many of their family members as they want. They'll send a photo in of their loved one. And we have physicians speak, we have donor families, recipients, we have people on the waiting list still waiting, really share their, their story and their journey about donation and thanking them for everything that they did so selflessly to give back to the people that are waiting for a miracle. And then my last slide, this kind of ties right back into what um, Beth was talking about, lighting it up, so blue and green. This is at UPMC Hammett in Erie. They have a trademark lighthouse that they light up blue and green during Donate Life Month. Um, so interestingly enough, their, their big rival health system, their colors are blue and green. So with the whole branding thing, this became a little questionable. However, with the ceremony that they do before they start this lighting, that really introduces what National Blue and Green Day is and what Donate Life is all about, that we're all here to save and heal lives through donation. They will light up this landmark and you can see it from very far away. And people know it is National Donate Life Month and that's what this is all about. 
So just a few of the things that our hospitals are really doing so cool. And we are so honored to be part of this. Wow, Angie, some of those ideas are just so touching and emotional. Um, they're really inspiring. Thank you. Um, okay, last but far from least, we have Heather Asipovich of Nevada Donor Network, who has brought Julie McIntosh of Compassion Care Hospice to share how non-hospital place, workplaces can get involved in donation. Hi, everyone. So I'm Heather Asipovich. I'm the Director of Hospital Services with Nevada Donor Network, um, and it's my privilege to present alongside uh, Julie McIntosh from Ca Compassion Care Hospice here in Las Vegas, um, just to share two seconds about who Julie is so that if people want to reach out later, um, I think she could be a great valuable resource for your hospice partners. Um, she's been a nurse here in Nevada for 25 years, has a focus on end of life care and senior care. Um, and her background also includes working with seniors across various settings and skilled nursing, assisted living and memory care, and also through the end of life and hospice and palliative care. I can tell you as a member of this community, she is a value add to uh, the people that she's able to serve and not only does she work in the home hospice setting, but also in a GIP hospice setting with a lot of our hospital partners. And so that's how I have gotten the privilege to get to know Julie better. Um, of course, Julie's direct contact, Jenna Dumas, our manager of community development, was unable to join today. But her information is also at the end because she oversees our Southern Nevada um, community development par or partnerships with our out-of-hospital partners as well as uh, Monica Miles, our Northern Nevada uh, Community Development Manager. So I can get you in touch with either of them. Um, but she is dedicated to be the coordinator for the We Are Honor Veterans Program, which in Nevada brings together hospice resources um, that with the Nevada Hospice Veteran Partnership across hospice um, groups across the state to help honor veterans and veteran care, which is very commendable. Next slide, please. So um, at Nevada Donor Network, we honor our hospice partnerships um, in addition to Compassion Care, but we work with several other large hospice agencies across the state. Um, and I wanted to just quickly share, tell you a little bit about why. Tracy Trout is, was one of our Florograph honorees a couple of years ago. You see there with um, her daughters and her husband uh, sharing a bit about her journey. She, she was battling cancer for the last five years of her life and passed away tragically from that cancer. But she was able to be cared for in a hospice setting. And prior to going into hospice, she had thought she could not be a donor because she had cancer. And so she was very upset about that um, at the time. However, when she did pass away, it was with a partner of ours that we serve here in Northern Nevada. And we were able to work with her family to honor her as a donor and be able to have her give the gift of sight to two other people. Um, and so that really triggered our focus as an organization on what we can do for that um, bridging after a hospital setting um, in the compassionate death and dying experience for patients, because we recognize that while they may not be organ candidates because they're no longer in a mechanically vented space, we're able to honor them through organ or through tissue and ocular services, as well as doing everything in our power to help them in any way possible, as they're not held to the same requirements a hospital would to work with an OPO. Um, the donation opportunities do exist outside of a hospital setting, and that's why we're so impassioned by that. We are a small OPO uh, with about 45 hospitals across the state of Nevada, and so we have really leaned into our out-of-hospital referral opportunities. And so I think that really sets the stage, and you know, we're talking today about um, initiatives for the do nation campaign, but I just wanted to share a little bit about what brought us to this relationship. Um, the goals of OPOs and hospices do align to support patients and their families. And of course, the partnership between an OPO and a hospice during end of life helps provide a breadth of options and support services for patients and their families. So for my peers in the hospital development, hospital services um, group that are on the call, you know, especially in that DCD um, uh, donation opportunities that we see for compassionate extubation, a hospice partnership can be very valuable. Next, next slide. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Julie. She's going to share a little bit about Compassion Care Hospice and brought us together. What I do want to tell you about before I, I uh, turn things over here to Julie is that um, since last year, so this is why it's important to, to engage them not only as a workplace partner, but also as a referral partner. So I, I implore you all to work with your hospice as a referring agency, um, because since May of last year, um, Compassion Care Hospice as a primarily ho hospital um, in-home hospice basis, but with a slight uh, business with the GIP in the hospital setting, have had over 150 referrals to us for tissue and ocular attempts. 
and nearly every month had at least one tissue or one ocular donor with a total of 13 donors. Um, 40 registered donor heroes of those more than 150 referrals were referred to us so that we could try to maximize any donation opportunity that they would have at the end of life. And uh, an average of 10% of those um, that we've been able to transfer over of, from referral to actual donor. So I'll turn it over to uh, Julie to share a little bit about compassion care. Thanks, Heather. I know we don't have much time. You don't really need to know too much about us as a hospice, but we've been doing this a really long time. Um, I am almost ashamed to say that even though I've been a nurse for 25 years, I know a lot about donation. I've been a registered donor since I got my driver's license at age 16. Um, when we met Nevada Donor Network last year about this time, they came in and did a presentation, kind of high level overview about the importance of organ, eye and tissue donation. And at the end of the presentation, I think all of us in the room went, mm, excuse me, you know our patients have terminal illness, right? How is it even possible that they could be donors? And we were all really surprised that just because they had a terminal illness does not um, discount them from the opportunity for donation. So once we learned that, we became so passionate about spreading the message and working together. Um, obviously, end-of-life care, we focus on patient-driven care. What are the patient's goals? What are the patient's wishes? How they want to live out the rest of their life, where they want to live, who they want to spend their time with. So certainly, we want to honor their wishes around donation. And I think we have found in the almost year that we've been working with Nevada Donor Network that almost half of our patients each month um, when we run our reports, they were registered donors. Um, so if we can help and facilitate their wishes at end of life, we've not yet had an organ donation go through. Um, we've had a few of those GIPs in the hospital that wanted to go um, all the way to donation, but it wasn't possible. Um, but certainly um, in that home setting, we've been able to do that. So um, I think that's enough for that slide and our why. If you want to go to the next one, I'll let Heather take back over. Yeah, so I, I know some uh, shared and, and I appreciate CORE's um, and your, your presentation on the utilization of the registeredme.org link for um, your healthcare system. But uh, so I just wanted to share that we've already started promoting this. So Compassion Care Hospice joined the donation campaign less than about a month ago now <laughs> and uh, had have leaned into it uh, with fervor. As you see on the left, we have redesigned all of our materials to with the donation. So we had done a lot with the Workplace Partnership for Life campaign, really making specialized Nevada Donor Network with the co-branding of CMS and HRSA, and then the organization, as you see there on the bottom. And each one of these is a flyer. We have table tents that we provide to our partners to put wherever they would like, hospital and out of hospital settings. Um, and so when they QR code link to that, it takes them to um, the registerme.org page for them. We also have created an extension link that is a really easy thing to remember. So if someone's trying to remember what to write down, um, Compassion Care Hospice is a little easier, but when you work with like a UMC hospital, there are about a thousand of them in the United States. So has, the name has to be a bit more specific, but on our website, we can be specific to our partners. So sharing some of those digital resources. Additionally, we have provided and created Donate Life Month kits for our non-hospital partners um, to help them. So leaning into the theme of the year last year with Be a Donor and this year with our uh, the cute little frogs. <laughs> so being able to create a kit that they can utilize in their uh, workspace. Um, and so I wanted to share that. Next slide. I'll turn it back over to Julie for the next slide, but I do wanna let you know that we have combined National Donor Day on February 14th, which I know others have mentioned with our Day of Heroes event. This is where we do an, um, a tabling event at the same time in many partners across um, the state of Nevada. And um, our newest partner in this campaign, Compassion Care Hospice and Julie, we said, you know what, do you wanna host a, a tabling at your hospice location? What do you think? And she goes, you know what, I'm gonna actually do five at that same time. So I'll turn it over to Julie to share about what impassioned her to do that and some ideas she has for next this coming month. Yeah, and when we found out, I think we had met with Nevada Donor Network to say, okay, besides what we're doing with our patients and families, how can we help spread the message? What more can we be doing in the community? And they mentioned that, you know, they had 
uh, Day of Heroes coming up in about two weeks. And would we want to do something at our office? And yeah, we took on the crazy task of organizing five events. But we work a lot with our YMCAs. Um, I, I speak and educate at their locations often. So I reached out to them. And again, it was such an easy ask. What do you need us to do? You just need us to give you space to put a table. Yeah, we can do that. Um, and I think, Heather, if I'm correct, this was the first time it has been done in the community setting outside of the hospitals. And it was a great success. You can see some of the photos there. Um, we had our community liaisons. They actually attended a one hour training um, that was provided through Nevada Donor Network. So we knew um, the things to say, how to answer questions. If people had questions like, well, I don't know if my religion supports donation, um, you know, those types of things, misconceptions. Believe me, in hospice, we are all too familiar with having to battle misconceptions. So we did a one hour training. They made it super easy for us. You can see we kind of tied it in. We had resources, um, the five wishes, which is an advanced care planning tool. Um, we have some resources about end of life and how to make decisions around CPR. So we kind of tied that together and we had an amazing response. We had 30 registered donors. I think we tied the hospitals in, in our locations. And then we did one here at our office as well. Um, for Donate Life Month and just even our continuing, um, anytime we go to health fairs and events, we just attended a women's and leadership conference where we had a table, we were a sponsor. So we included the um, HRSA and Do Nation um, QR code flyer, the table cards. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of advanced care planning classes. April is also National Healthcare Decision Month. So we tend to focus on classes on advanced directives and making your wishes known. I actually just did one last week at a Veterans Resource Center. And amongst the handouts, like the five wishes and the CPR booklet, we gave them the organ donation brochure. We gave them the information, the flyer with the QR code, um, because as you're thinking about and making end of life decisions, this is certainly something we want them to talk about as well. Um, if you want to be a donor, making your wishes known, making sure that your family understands that so that they can facilitate that um, and help to honor your wishes. We have um, a bunch of stuff planned. We are sponsoring the Hope Blows event that Nevada Donor Network is doing. We'll be a sponsor. We'll have a team walking. Social media push, I think we did three last April um, during Donate Life Month. We're going to participate in Spirit Week and Blue and Green Day. Um, and I think I covered most of them. Um, I did want to say here, um, we did just join the campaign um, officially in February. And they told me when we were talking yesterday in preparation for this call, we've already reached gold status. So yeah. I just want to say it really is. I was a little bit overwhelmed too when they approached me with it. I printed out the scorecard. I started getting anxiety. You know, I have a big job. There's a lot to do. How am I going to do all of this? And they said, you're already doing it. Everything that you're doing counts towards your scorecard. We just not how now are going to start tracking it. And it really has been so easy. And Nevada Donor Network has provided so many resources and the print materials and the social media kits where this really should be replicated with every hospice around the nation. There is no reason. It's such a natural partnership for us to work together. And I'll turn it back over to you, Heather. Yeah, and I think we have our last slide coming up here. All right, so I have her contact information there. Julie's name is a bit easier to spell than mine. Um, so we have the email addresses there that you'll see. I do wanna let you guys know, uh, and I, I prepared Julie to let you know that she was our outstanding out of hospital champion for 2022 based on her dedication to donation for us. And as you see in the photo there, she's surrounded by her team. And, and Julie, did you wanna mention anything about your team there? Yeah, I think it's just so important that you have to have the buy-in of the entire team. In that photo, we have three of our doctors, our medical directors, our executive director, one of our regional operations director. And once we met Nevada Donor Network and understood how closely our mission and visions align, um, everybody got on board and everybody supports this and what can we do and how can we help get the message out to our patients and families and the community. So we wanna thank you for the people who stayed on eight minutes past the end, but we appreciate uh, um, allowing us to provide our story. And I just wanna say thank you to Julie for um, really leaning into the HRSA donation campaign and um, showing that it, it 
it is, a, I think we have a lot of examples today that have shown how it's not the biggest lift. Um, there's ways to find small opportunities to collaborate with your OPO or Donate Life partners to be able to have events that will raise donation awareness. Um, and we just appreciate the time. So thank you. Wow. Heather and Julie, that was fantastic. I cannot believe gold already. That's just, that's truly amazing. Um, I'm so sorry that we don't have time for questions <laughs> um, before everyone goes and before we have Lauren close out our meeting. I just want to reiterate that we have Donate Life Month graphics available in the Do Nation Campaign Facebook group. Just some, if you're not already a member, submit a request to join and we will quickly approve you. Um, I'm going to skip through and Lauren, I'm going to hand things back over to you for final words from HRSA. Thank you so much, Marley. And thank you everyone for these fabulous presentations. Um, although we didn't have time for questions and answers, feel free to email us if you have any questions. You can always reach us um, at donation at Akoya online.com. Online okay, so donation or donation at akoyaonline.com, or you can email us at HRSA at donation. Um, at hersa.gov as well. So please send us your questions or any ideas you'd like to share and we will get those out in an e-blast as well. So thank you all again for staying a little bit late for today's webinar. Uh, I just will reiterate and extend a special thanks to our spotlight speakers for inspiring us with fresh ideas for an impactful National Donate Life Month. As you conduct activities and sign up donors this April and throughout the year, please document your efforts and email photos or videos or both to donation at hersa.gov. We can't wait to celebrate and recognize all your hard work in this year's campaign. On behalf of Kim and myself at HRSA, I extend our sincerest thanks to all of you for your time here today and for your work as Do Nation partners. We wish you a successful National Donate Life Month and a campaign year ahead. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, all. Thank you so much.